If your goal in life is getting your child to listen without yelling, then you are in the right place. Nobody wants to have to raise their voice with their kids, but almost every parent does it. Some unfortunately find that often the only way to get their kids to listen requires them to yell or even threaten consequences before the kids even look up from what they're doing. And this is not a long-term positive way to parent. So let's talk today about getting your child to listen without yelling on the Just 7 Steps blog. Hi, I'm Robert Schramm, a behavior analyst, education specialist, author, and dad. And I'm also the developer of the 7 Steps to Instructional Motivation. Each week I provide you with helpful information based on the Just 7 Steps approach. So if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, take just a second, do it right now, you'll be certainly glad you did. My kids don't always wanna stop their activities and do things they would rather avoid. They're often on their phones or in their rooms. And if I'm not careful about attending to a few important aspects before I give my instructions, there's a chance that my kids will ignore me as long as they can until I'm motivated to raise my voice or yell at them. Of course, it's frustrating when this happens, but more often than not, it is me who's made the error and not my kids. So although I offer a full workshop on my website for free called How to Get Your Kids to Listen Without Raising Your Voice or Nagging, which can be found at just7steps.com forward slash workshop. For now, I'm going to share with you some simple tips for getting your child to listen without yelling. The first tip I have for getting your child to listen without yelling is to avoid giving any instructions that are not truly important. And what I mean by this is if it's not important enough for you to follow the other tips that I give you in this blog, then it isn't an instruction that you should be giving. Inundating your child with tons of unnecessary or unimportant instructions that you're going to allow them to get out of if they don't wanna follow it is not helping them to know they need to listen and respond to you when you talk to them the first time. So if you're willing to do the following few things when you give an instruction, then that instruction is important enough for you to give it to your child. And if you're not willing to do the following few tips to getting your child to listen without yelling, then you're better off not giving the instruction at all. Once you've decided that an instruction is important enough to follow through, then the first step in getting your child to listen without yelling involves making sure you don't start by yelling your instruction from another room or at a child who's engaged in doing other things. Instead, make sure you're able to make eye contact with your child throughout the process of giving that instruction. If your child is not looking, there is no way to know if they're listening and no way to expect them to cooperate with you without then repeating your instructions, warning them, and potentially begin to yell yourself. In addition to working to make eye contact with your child when you're giving your instructions, you might also have to block or stop a fun activity that they're engaged in before giving that instruction. If your goal is to give an instruction and your child is playing a video game, uh, there's no way that you're going to get full eye contact from them to give them that instruction. And in this setting, your first step is either to tell them to pause the game or step in front of the screen or pause it yourself before getting your eye contact and then giving your instruction. The best way to get eye contact from your child before giving any instruction is to learn how to wait on your instructions until you have something in your control that your child is interested in or wants from you. Every time your child comes to you and asks for something to have or to do or to play with, even to eat, this is the best time of the highest probability for you to get what you want in return. The answer can always be yes, but first I need you to do this thing for me. One of the most important steps of the seven steps to instructional motivation is making sure you have your child's favorite things identified and organized so that you can decide if, when, and for how long they can have access to those things. If this is being done regularly, then you will have situations where they come to you for those things often throughout the day, giving you tons of opportunities to ask for the things you need with their undivided attention. More on the seven steps is available at our website, www.justsevensteps.com. And the last tip I can give you for getting your child to listen without yelling is if 
you've done a good job of following the, all the other tips up to this point, you should then begin to refuse to repeat yourself. Don't repeat your instructions after you've already given them with your child's full attention, but instead follow them with mini consequences. Mini consequences are small demonstrations that their access to favorite things are going to be lost for the moment or harder to get if they don't currently have them. If you've made eye contact with your child and given instruction and they don't do what you've asked, rather than repeat the instruction, begin to block or remove access to something they're using, want or will want soon. Let them see this thing happening and be willing to then withhold those items until your child comes to you and asks for them again. Then once again, explain that they are missing out because they didn't listen and you can remind them of their instruction to get the item back or to have the next thing that they ask for. Now, I can't promise you that following these tips will mean your child will always listen to you the first time that you speak to them or that you will never feel the urge to yell again. For that kind of information, I again would urge you to check out the free workshop, how to get your kids to listen without raising your voice or nagging at just7steps.com forward slash workshop. But if you follow these five basic tips, whenever you give an instruction, you should see an immediate improvement in your ability for getting your child to listen without yelling. Again, those tips include one, only given instructions that are important enough to follow through on, two, making eye contact when you give instructions, three, block or stop ongoing fun activities before giving an instruction, four, wait for a moment when your child wants something from you before you give your instruction, and the fifth tip for getting your child to listen without yelling is don't repeat instructions, but follow them with immediate mini consequences instead. If you like this video blog, I would love it if you would leave me a comment, uh, give me a thumbs up, share this video with others who might benefit, and then subscribe to this channel for more parenting content. I'll see you right here next week, but only if you remember to subscribe. So what are you waiting for?